Here's an example of ping, our friend. This is a, just a standard simple ping, ping 10.2.2.1. And as we can see, it's been successful. That's what the exclamation marks mean. It's been successful. Let me give you an example of a ping. We'll ping from a router so you can see what it's like. So we'll type in ping 192.0.2.1. That's what it looks like on our router. We can see we sent five packets, which is the default. 100 bytes is sent for the packets, and it is every two seconds. So one packet every two seconds and exclamation marks means it was successful. If we go to our PC, we do the same thing. Let's type in ping 192.0.2.1. We'll see that the output's significantly different, but again, it's telling us that we have a reply from 192.0.2.1. And in this case, the size is only 32 bytes as opposed to the router, which sends 100 bytes. But we still generate one every two seconds, and instead of five, we're only generating four with our PC. We can use extended pings. And this is very useful on our routers. By using extended pings, we can modify the source of the packet. So for example, if we ping from DSW1 in our topology, out to the internet. What is the source of the ping packet? It is the IP address associated with the interface the packet is leaving. So once the device looks in the routing table as to what is the best way to get to 192.0.2.1, let's take a look at that, show IP route. 192.0.2.1, it's gigabit one slash zero slash 10. So what's the IP address of gigabit ethernet one slash zero slash 10? Show IP interface brief. It is 10.1.10.2. So the source of the packet is 10.1.10.2. However, what if I wanted to test connectivity from interface VLAN 10? to the internet. Well, that's where the extended ping comes into play. So ping 192.0.2.1, source it from 10.1.1.1. This allows me now to test it from a different interface. Because you have to remember that I might be able to reach that destination from the outside interface. So gigabit 1 slash 0 slash 10 on DSW1 but I might now be able to reach that same IP address from the inside interface because we are not potentially advertising that particular network appropriately. So this will let you know if you have reachability from that particular router from the network you're having trouble with. So if PC1 was struggling with connectivity, well, can the router from the same address reach? And if the router from the same address can reach, then you know you have a problem from the PC towards that router since the router can get there from the exact same network. So the extended ping helps us out that way by now focusing our efforts on a specific side of a network or a specific interface. We can see here that we can even change the size. We said the size was 100 bytes by default. Well, we can increase that size, for example here, 1480, and we want to test MTU on the path. So the maximum transmission unit might have been changed on some device's interface. So we can check on that. We can figure it out. Maybe connectivity is broken in our network and we want to see, well, geez, where is it happening? What's going on? Well, we can change the size of the packet. Instead of sending 100 bytes, let's send 1480. Does it work? Yeah, let's send 1479, 14, and so on and so forth, or go the other way. In addition to that, we can set the do not fragment bit, which means if you reach a point in the network where fragmentation has to occur because the MTU is too small, don't fragment it. So don't break that packet up into smaller packets. No, 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 no. Leave it complete. And by leaving it complete, then we'll start to see an error because if the packet can't be fragmented, then it can't be sent. And as a result, we'll get an idea of where maybe we have potential issues within our network. And we could also change the timeout too. So we can send packet, the ping packets slower, we can send them faster, we can uh, generate um, 
Uh, we can generate traffic by doing the ping. So there's a lot of different reasons uh, why we want to use ping. But the basic reason from a troubleshooting standpoint is to simply test the reachability. And if we want to take it even a step further, we can do uh, an extended ping whereby we specify the options instead of in a single line, in multiple lines. And by doing so, you can see you can change the protocol you're using. You can specify the target address, your repeat count, the datagram size, uh, 100 bytes, as we said, by default, the timeouts two by default. But then you can get into some extended commands as well. For example, you might want to specify the type of service. So that way there you can check if your packets are being treated appropriately by quality of service that you have set up. And as below, down below you can see, right here, same output, our packets were successful in this case.